before I got into academics, I spent uh, almost 13 years in the industrial design and construction industry. So I've tried to leverage that experience uh, in the, what I do in the academic environment and what I've done in, in research related to the highway industry. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been fun. Uh, guidebook for construction manager, general contractor, contracting for highway projects. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this guidebook. Uh, it's a product of an NCHRP project, uh, National Cooperative uh, Highway Research Program project, and Doug Gransberg, was the uh, academic on this, and Doug's from uh, uh, Iowa State University. Um, the, uh, I'm on a synthesis oversight committee, one of the sort of outreach things I do, uh, and uh, on that committee I get to pick, help pick or select synthesis topics. Uh, we get over 180 topics a year to filter through, and we only get about 12 to uh, pick. And, and actually develop, and, and so in late 2008-2009, uh, uh, the, the uh, CMR topic of project delivery came up and, and it was sort of instantly uh, selected and came to the top of the uh, heap in, in, in terms of being a synthesis topic. Uh, synthesis are state of the practice type reviews and documentations. Uh, we tried to provide some characteristics of CMR and try to describe how uh, agencies would evaluate project characteristics and requirements to make the decision to use CMR. Uh, and this became the basis for a problem statement which was funded almost immediately after the synthesis came out to develop a guidebook on this topic in 2000. 11, 2013 timeframe. So uh, Doug Gransberg was also the, the PI on the synthesis, so Doug brought a lot to the table. Uh, I've been involved with TRB in, in research since the early 90s, and this project, this topic, went through this process faster than any I've seen at the Transportation Research Board. It just it amazes me that we started in 2008 and had a had a guidebook uh, finished, not yet published, but finished uh, uh, at, by the end of 2013. So what's the guidebook cover? Basically, it addresses these questions. What is CMGC, also known as Construction Manager at Risk? The types of projects, what's the benefit, uh, and when do you select uh, CMGC for project delivery. Uh, we had a research framework that we followed. Um, I was on the panel for this particular project uh, that Doug was the PI on. And, and so we started out, of course, with Synthesis 402 as the uh, basis. And so we sort of looked at theory about practice, notice the caps on about, so we were trying to go back and make sure we understood what's going on in industry right now and, and to find the current state of practice. Uh, then we, in phase two, we wanted to look at the theory four practice, and so we developed the guidebook topical content, try to figure out how we wanted to really capture information about uh, uh, this topic and, and, and then organize the topical content into a guidebook. And then finally, theory in practice was to document uh, uh, the different sort of models that uh, make up the CMGC approach. And, and then that ultimately led to the recommended guidebook. Uh, there wasn't that many projects going on at the time, so our research methodology was basically case studies and interviews. Um, and we went beyond just the uh, DOTs because there wasn't that many doing uh, CMGC at the time. So we did look at other transportation uh, industries beyond the highway uh, sector when we did this. So I, I, what I want to do uh, just briefly here is lay out and give some uh, insight into what's in uh, the guidebook. It has five chapters, as you can see here. And I'm just going to talk about a couple of things in each of the sections of the guidebook. So uh, the introduction, typical, what's the purpose of the guidebook? Uh, what kind of audience were we trying to write the guidebook for? Uh, obviously, DOTs was the principal audience, but certainly contracting community and design community could 
benefit from uh, looking at the guidebook. Uh, we wanted to describe uh, uh, what this process is so people would have an understanding of it and then why use it. You know, it's always the value added proposition. What, what value added does uh, using CMGC bring to the table? So John uh, did a good job, of course, of uh, hitting the major benefits of uh, CMGC. Just quickly, ability to fast track, in other words, overlap design and construction, uh, reduce overall project time. Uh, construction input and design, that certainly helps contractors like Sunt be more efficient when they do construction, when they have input into the design. Uh, early knowledge of cost before you start construction, during the design phase, you can get almost fixed target price at that point before you even get there. Uh, ability to bid early work packages. If you develop the design and work packages, you can actually start the bidding process on a fixed price lump sum basis uh, uh, with these work packages, owner control of the design, you don't lose that. And, and so it's kind of between uh, uh, the design bid build model and the uh, design build model. And then flexibility during uh, design construction. What I really mean here is I, I think there's, uh, you, you can sort of figure out when you want to start construction. How far do you want to take uh, design before you actually start construction, but again, typically there's an overlap of design and construction. And then shared risks between the agency and the contractor uh, through this process. Uh, here's some graphics of uh, the three main uh, delivery methods. Uh, uh, the argument was that this CMGC actually does maybe give you a shorter schedule perhaps overall, starting with design and RFP through construction. A uh, key again is you still have two contracts, one with the designer and one with the CMGC, uh, but the CMGC is, starts on the project earlier, uh, so there's some compensation issues involved in that, and we'll talk about that in, in a minute. Uh, the procurement and selection process, uh, you know, we basically, this chapter provides a little bit of background and understanding in the process, but really provides guidance on how to solicit, evaluate, and select a GMC contractor. As John said, uh, the guidebook describes quality-based selection and the parameters involved there where there's no price involved, and then the best value uh, selection process where you do QBS plus you have a price component uh, algorithms to determine uh, uh, the, the uh, appropriate contractor, the one you want to pick. Uh, Self-perform versus subcontracting seems to be a consideration. Uh, most DOTs that we uh, talk to would like to see the GM, the CMGC perform 30 to so percent of uh, the work and then perhaps subcontact the rest, but that's sort of a negotiated thing, so you can work that through. Sometimes you can work a shared savings. Uh, GMCs, uh, CMGCs work on a, what's called a guaranteed maximum price, or I'd rather call it target price and you set that target price before construction and if the contractor gets uh, uh, gets in before, under the target price, maybe uh, you can put that incentive in there to shared savings. Uh, you can still use normal sort of uh, incentive, disincentive uh, clauses in, in this uh, process as well. And then trying to select the GMC uh, sooner than later is important because of the early uh, 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 involvement of the contractor and, and contractor input into the design. Uh, this slide shows uh, some of the CMGC uh, fee structures that uh, can be used. There's different alternatives. I'll just give you a little description of the acronyms there. JGC, uh, Job General Conditions. This is time related and other indirect costs that are sort of directly a function of the project. Uh, HOO, home office overhead, time related and other indirect costs that are directly related to a project. Again, costs for salaries of estimators and things like that. Um, PSF, pre-construction service fee, the amount established to compensate the contractor for 
uh, providing services before the contract is awarded, the construction contract, and then a construction management fee is the amount that represents the uh, contractor's profit for completing the construction itself. As John said, one of the things about, or one of the features of CMGC is using open books. And so open book means that the uh, owner, designer, and, and the CMGC, uh, especially the agency, can look at the estimate, look at the labor portion, the material portion, the equipment portion, and, and try to understand, review it. Sometimes you get what's called a, an independent cost estimator or ICE that participates in this review process as well. And then the uh, other costs are negotiated, the ones that are shown on here, uh, and, and they help uh, uh, set the uh, total uh, picture for the, the cost of the project. So what uh, are some of the pre-construction services? Um, uh, the objective of this section is to provide uh, uh, mechanics regarding the process itself, some basic ex some explanation of the different kinds of pre-construction services and where they can add value, uh, provide details on practices for scheduling of design and construction work packages and the process that's involved in doing that so you can get uh, construction started before design is is 100 percent complete and then uh, provide guidance on release of uh, the construction design packages uh, there's a table in there and I'm just showing this because there is a host of different uh, possible pre-construction uh, services it's packaged in terms of design related cost related on the left side up on the right side, schedule related and then administrative related. So it takes some thought for the uh, owner, the agency to sort of come to grips with what you want your CMGC to pro provide in this model. Uh, design input, uh, um, a designer validation, uh, or perhaps designed validation as opposed to technical design review. And then the big advantage in my mind as a, from my experience in industry is you compare the scope of work with both the required budget and schedule as the scopes develop. So you can have your contractor doing estimating for you to uh, help with uh, that. Uh, scheduling again, uh, you develop design work packages uh, that hopefully flow seamlessly into the construction bid packages so the contractor can help uh, develop those uh, requirements for those bid packages to make that work as part of the pre-construction process. And again, the other, another uh, excellent feature of the CMGC is, is constructability reviews, uh, which might include things like pricing alternative di design solutions, you know, early in the design process to see what's the best way to go forward. Uh, perhaps improving the efficiency of construction because you can match the design to the contractor's actual means, methods, and equipments. And then you have, of course, early cost estimating uh, as uh, the design is uh, uh, being completed. Uh, pricing structure, uh, there's sort of three areas in, in this category, the uh, uh, defining the pricing structure, uh, the term cost models used to describe what the structure might look like, and there's a number of different components. Uh, this graphic just attempts to sort of capture all the costs from an agency perspective. So on the left side, the big bracket says owner's total construction cost. And there's some, uh, the, the uh, sort of gold color would be sort of what we think are mandatory uh, components of a target price. And the ones with the, the dashed lines around it are perhaps optional. Uh, uh, components and so it kind of sets the stage. There's more details on all of these in the in the guidebook that uh, uh, better explains uh, uh, the approach. There's also a list. This is a, a little bit hard to read, of course, but uh, on the left side there's a bunch of costs that are not to be included in the. CMGC construction fee percentage. So you have to have clarity on what's uh, estimated direct costs and other costs and what's part of the fee, which is on the right uh, 
hand side of the slide. So uh, this actually comes from the Colorado DOT and, and, and they've uh, been one of the early users of CMGC and so they've spent some time trying to uh, make sure there's a good understanding of what's, what's in the fee and what isn't in the fee would be included in other costs. So this cost model, the intent is to reflect the financial aspects of the project scope of work as it's developed. It acts as a metric which uh, the value of all design alternatives uh, can be measured against and compared to to achieve a target budget. Uh, needs approval by the agency at different stages. That's uh, the benefit of having the uh, uh, contractor involved during design and then uh, allows you to compare the various estimates, not just the engineer's estimate, but uh, the one we think of at PS&E, but the engineer's estimates or uh, design estimates during the design process uh, to make sure uh, uh, the scope stays within the approved budget and, and we identify possible deviations and things can be done to uh, uh, get you back on budget or perhaps you may find something that's a good a value added scope uh, add and you want to include it which might change the budget. Uh, I think the thing that John was talking about trust goes uh, with collaboration and I think the big plus of this is collaboration on both scope and cost. So it leads to assessing scope in the context of cost as well as assessing the key construction means and methods materials, improves accuracy uh, because you're doing that estimate as you go and, and you have a final target price before you, before you get uh, complete with design and often that's the price that the contractor will live with and ensures the project scopes with, fits within the agency's budget and uh, gives it an opportunity to investigate alternatives again uh, and possible different ways to uh, uh, develop the scope and different means and methods and making sure all these uh, stay within uh, the budget. So the uh, uh, last uh, chapter just provides some administrative details on how you uh, sort of manage a, CM, a CMGC project monitoring, uh, a project uh, details on effective practices related to quality, and then finally, uh, some uh, common uh, practices relative to dispute resolution that may uh, crop up. So this uh, uh, document's going to be published by AASHTO. Uh, uh, this is a little bit different. NCHRP often publishes their own reports, but uh, if you know anything about AASHTO, they vote on documents uh, and they have to get a certain level of approval before they come out under the AASHTO uh, label, if you will. So it looks like uh, 2014, early 2015 right now is the target. Uh, if you are interested, uh, I would be uh, willing to send you a bootleg copy. Don't say where you got it, but I'll, I'll provide it. That's my email address up there. Um, 